Next I'm going to do is uh, cut out some stencils and do some low lying ground and then uh, do a barn right here and uh, just mess around with, you know, so I've done the clouds first. So you'll see the clouds just kind of come up over the horizon, over this dark land I'm going to draw in the background. And uh, so um, it'll be fairly simple backdrop, something simple you could do yourself. So uh, get a hold of an airbrush. It's fun. It's worth it. And uh, the compressor I got um, paid so that's 65, like so 75 bucks for the compressor uh, from Harbor Freight. Not the loudest thing, but you can jury rig things to uh, kind of muffle. I mean, not the quietest air compressor in the world, but uh, you can jury rig stuff to make it quieter and seems to do the job adequately. So anyway, um, like I said, next thing, I'm going to paint and land. Um, so I'll be back. Okay, well, this series is morphing into something completely different. Uh, this was going to be a part of the um, putting scenery on the interchange, but I'm getting a little carried away here with this backdrop thing, so I'll probably call this one the airbrushing backdrop series. A short digression, but I'll be doing my backdrop behind the interchange, so it's I'm, I'm trying to segue into everything, but uh, I'm trying to uh, work some things out first of how I want to do things and uh, as far as a backdrop and uh, do some experimenting so you get to be a part of that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do some land. I'll put in some landscapes here. Uh, I've got uh, cut out some stencils and they're very yeah, they're very simple. Cardstock, a couple of pieces taped together and uh, take a pencil, just sketch. I want to do a mountain in the distance. So I sketch a mountain profile and uh, <coughs> cut it out with a pair of scissors. Uh, you can, uh, you know, use an X-Acto knife too, real sharp X-Acto knife to cut it out. Uh, um, if you want to do that, you just need to make sure you got a good surface underneath so you don't uh, scratch up uh, some furniture there. That probably would not go over too well, but uh, making the stencils is very easy. So uh, I'm going to do the most distant mountains first. I mean, this is just a one set of mountains I'm just going to throw into the corner here. And... Uh, I cut my stencil in such a way that uh, I can just uh, yeah, set it down and just set it down right there and uh, see flat just set it down on the layout not a layout on the backdrop and just uh, airbrush it in I'm going to use a uh, darker color for more distant hills and mountains and then a uh, lighter color for <coughs> things that are more up close. So, uh, you know, <laughs> the low rolling hills kind of did the same thing with these stencils. Just kind of uh, drew some uh, low rolling hills and I'll, uh, this one will overlay the mountain. This will be up close so that'll go in like that and then there'll be another distant hill which will go in behind. So I'll do the mountain, then the hill, and then the low rolling hills in that order. So but you kind of uh, get an idea of, uh, oops, kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here and the progression of things. So uh, let me go. Mm. Okay. I've got my mountain stencil out. Let me put it up here. And if I planned this differently, I probably should have put a distant mountain in first and then drew in a cloud over it. But I can, that's why I'm kind of sticking it over to the side here. I didn't quite plan that out right. So, uh, you know, if you're going to do a backdrop with an airbrush, you got to think, uh, think in terms of layers, paint in the most distant objects first and then just gradually pull in with your closer object. So uh, one kind of layers over the other. So I've got some, uh, mixed some really nice let me shake that acrylic paint and the mixture of this paint for this particular brand it's basically acrylic craft paint got it hobby lobby um, and you know it's, it works okay I mean, you can get uh, the fancier um, made for airbrushing acrylics they cost quite a bit more and uh, I don't doubt that they are worth getting it's just 
I'm using what I've got on hand to do this right now. So, and it works. For what I'm doing, it works fine. I'm not doing any uh, space age, high tech, um, anything really radical that needs fine detail or super high quality paint. I'm just doing a backdrop. So, I'm go ahead and uh, get some brown paint to go through here first. All right, I'll put my hand down here, hold it in place, and then just uh, airbrush this. Nothing fancy. Just like that. Go brown. There we go. Not gonna take long at all. Too much, but uh... there we go. Now I probably could have uh, probably put a press this a little bit closer together, but that's not. Eh. Yeah, I probably should have held the stents a little bit closer to this. But that's not too bad because I want to have the boundaries kind of be a little fuzzy and indistinct. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, kind of mess this over with white um, just to kind of make it look a little bit more distant that's uh, shrouded in mist. So I'm not too concerned. But uh, if you try something like this, yeah, you'll probably want to hold this uh, a little bit closer, um, push the stencil a bit closer, get a little acrylic paint in your hand, but that's not going to kill ya. I want to put a hill, kind of a distant hill. Let me uh, think about this quick. I have this in here because I want this hill to rise up behind that. To be behind this little hill here. And uh, have this kind of peek out in between. So I think, uh, yeah. I think that'll work. A dark hill. And I might let me do this. Let me lighten this puppy up a little bit. Lighten up the color. I'm gonna make the low rolling hills green, but they're gonna be kind of darker, more muted greens. Because I'm just gonna take a little mist, a little white, and just kind of fog them in a little bit so they make them look a little bit more distant. So okay. the old brown out. Spray in the paper here. Alright. Got the other hill back there. Well, I kind of noticed I just screwed up a little bit. Ah, uh, darn it. Got a little overspray. That's one of the hazards of doing this. Well, that's a lesson to learn. Um, Got to watch the overspray. And I had a little... Darn. Little problem here. Whew. Dodged a bullet on this one. Fortunately, this particular layer was fairly fresh, so I was able to uh, take a damp sponge and wipe this off. It'll be okay there because that's gonna. So, you've probably been wondering, good grief, why doesn't this guy just go ahead and. Uh, just do this directly on his backdrop. Why aren't I doing this on this backdrop? Will you understand why? Because here on this little thing, on this little two by four piece of meat, and I, I have the freedom to screw up all I want. So, fortunately, I was able to wipe this excess off right away. 
And this here, I'm not going to worry too much because I'm going to have, have a green hill come down and go over that. So, watch over spray if you're using stencil. Make sure you have big enough area on either side of the stencil that will protect um, the rest of your backdrop from basically protect the rest of the backdrop from yourself so <laughs> just like I need it too uh, so all right well you kind of see how that's starting to take shape now um, got some landscapes now I'm going to uh, let's see which one did I want to put here I want to overlay this one right here and do this more of a darker green and I uh, should probably give this a few minutes to dry here before I uh, put any stencils on it. So, ah, uh, it's break time. Ooh. <laughs> 